Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. Today we are gonna be talking about voltage drop and how it can affect the way we charge our batteries or our power stations. Whether the power is coming from solar panels or 12 volt charging in our vehicles, we all can experience voltage drop. So today I wanna to discuss what is voltage drop and how we can get around it. Now before we talk about voltage drop, I first wanna talk about how we measure electricity moving through the wires. By using a couple different tools, we can measure both the voltage and the amperage and then timesing those two together, we can get the actual wattage. Now let's take an example of a 100 watt solar panel. If we had a 100 watt solar panel connected up to our charge controller and it was charging up this battery, we could measure it with some tools. It'd be putting out around 18 volts at peak power and five amps. And by timesing those together, it gives us 90 watts. So we have 90 watts going through this wire at 18 volts and right around five amps. Now, as that electricity from your solar panel goes through different sizes of wire, it will experience different levels of resistance and resistance actually drops down the voltage and creates heat. Now, as a rule of thumb, the larger the cable or wire, the less resistance it will have. For example, this really small 18 gauge wire will have a lot of resistance and a lot of heat if you try to put a lot of amperage through it. And this really big two watt cable will have very little resistance if you put a lot of amperage through it. So as our solar panel is charging up our battery, you have the amperage going through that cable and it is experiencing resistance, which is going to drop down the voltage. So let's go ahead and talk about the three main causes of voltage drop. Now, the voltage drop in any system is caused by these three things. The wire diameter that you choose to use in your system, the wire length between your systems and components, so how long or how short are those wires, and then the amount of amperage you have going through those wires. So a properly designed system, you'll get minimal voltage drop and minimal heat buildup, so it's a very safe system. However, if you build a system with the improper wire size or too long of wires or too many amps for the wires that you have installed, you can have a problem and you can even create a fire from the heat buildup. So you have to be very careful when you're designing your system. Now, an example of using resistance to create heat is a toaster oven. They pass a lot of amperage through the small wires and that creates heat and toasts your bread. Another appliance that uses resistance to create heat is an electrical heater. So as power passes through the heater, it converts that into heat to heat up your room. Now with solar wires, we do not want to convert our energy to heat, so we have to make sure we're using the proper wire size. Now luckily there are a lot of online resources about how many amps can go through each size of wire. They even have voltage drop calculators and I'll include that down in the video description. But let's go ahead and do some experiments to see if we can experience voltage drop and see how much power we actually lose. Okay guys, for the first test here, I wanna see how much voltage drop we get over 12 gauge wire using a couple different lengths. So I have my 100 amp hour battery and this is a three foot 12 gauge wire connected up to my battery load tester and it's set to a 15 amp load. Now 12 gauge wire is good for 20 amps and we're pulling about 75% of its rated capacity. So I have two 25 foot cables and a 50 foot cable Let's go ahead and see how much voltage drop we're getting with the three foot cable and then we'll plug in each one of these. So at the battery, we are pulling 15 amps and the battery voltage is sitting at 12.81 volts. Now for the first test, the three foot cable, we are seeing 11.8 volts at the battery load tester, meaning we are losing one full volt due to voltage drop. Now I've gone ahead and added in the 25 foot section of 12 gauge wire. So at the battery load tester, we are now sitting at 10.5 to 10.6 volts, meaning we've lost more than two volts due to voltage drop. Now, before I go ahead and add in another 25 foot section of cable, just be aware when you're down at 10 volts, a lot of 12 volt appliances will stop working. So we're kind of at the threshold here, but I wanna see what happens when we add another 25 feet. Now I've gone ahead and added in 50 feet of 12 gauge wire in line with our battery load tester. And we are sitting at 9.12 volts. So we have lost over three and a half volts due to voltage drop over this 12 gauge wire. Okay, for the final test, I have 75 feet of 12 gauge wire connected up. Now remember we are seeing 12.8 volts at the battery and now we are seeing 7.78 volts, meaning we have lost over five volts just due to voltage drop in the wiring. Now, in order to visualize the voltage drop at each length of cable, I came up with this graph so you guys can visualize it. 
Now this is the result for the 15 amp load test. I also did a test at 10 amps and this is the graph for that. So you can see that we definitely lost less voltage over the 10 amp load versus the 15 amp load. Okay, so moving on, I'm pretty excited about this next test because I often get the question, well, how long of an extension cable can you have between your solar panel and your power station before you start to lose power due to voltage drop? So during this test, we will be simulating the output power from a 12 volt, 200 watt solar panel. A lot of them put out their peak power from 20 all the way up to 22 volts. And I have the power supply set to 21 and a half volts and it goes all the way up to 10 amps. So we're gonna plug it into the Blue Eddy EB70 using this short cable here to see how much power we get. And then we'll go ahead and add 25 foot increments of 12 gauge cable to see how much power we lose. Now let's go ahead and jump to the results of this test. Using the two foot cable, I was able to get 166 watts charging input on the EB70. And if you notice on the power supply, it's a little bit under eight amps. And that's because the EB70 has an eight amp charging input limit. When I installed 25 feet of cable, I was getting 162 watts. With 50 feet of cable, I was getting 156 watts. With 75 feet of cable, I was getting 151 watts. And with 100 feet of 12 gauge cable, I was still getting 146 watts. Now I basically doubled that to 200 feet. And at 200 feet, I was getting 124 watts. So we had a peak of 166 and it dropped down all the way to 124 watts when we used 200 feet of 12 gauge wire. So we only saw a loss of 25% of the power over that full strand of wire. Now for the next test, what I wanna do is test this array here. This is using four 180 watt Bougie RV 9BB panels in series. So it puts out around 80 volts or so. So we're gonna be testing it on the Blue Eddy EB200P. Now we're gonna see around 10 amps going through the 12 gauge wire. So we might have a little bit of voltage drop, but I'm not expecting too much. Now I first wanted to see how many amps were going through these wires and my clamp meter was showing right around eight and a half amps. Now my first power measurement was actually using the stock charging cable. We were getting a peak of around 638 watts and our voltage was peaking out right around 78 volts. Now I'm gonna go ahead and summarize the rest of the information in a graph so you can see what happens every 25 feet. For example, at 25 feet, we were seeing 632 watts, 50 feet, we were seeing 626 watts, drop down a little bit at 75 feet and so forth. And you can see at the end, we dropped all the way down to 598 watts peak. So after 200 feet of 12 gauge wire, we only lost around 30 watts, which is only six to 7%. So if you have a large solar array like this with your panels connected in series, with the higher voltage and the lower amperage, you shouldn't have to worry too much about voltage drop. Now that is not the case when you have just one panel or multiple panels connected together in parallel, because your amperage is much higher for the total voltage. For example, with that 200 watt panel test, we lost 25% of the power at 200 feet. Okay guys, another instance of voltage drop. We have a 12 volt compressor fridge here and I have my Forerunner. This is a fourth gen Forerunner, it's a 2008. And in the back, I have a 12 volt socket. Now this uses the stock wiring from Toyota. So it's probably 16 to 14 gauge. It gets a lot of voltage drop. So you're gonna see, we try to start the compressor on this fridge while being plugged into this and it's actually going to throw an E1 error because the voltage is too low. This pulls around eight to 10 amps on surge just very briefly. And just because of that amount of amperage going through that small wiring, it's gonna drop the voltage down to a level that this is not usable. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see what happens on the stock wiring. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. You're gonna see the screen turn on. Now this fridge is cool because it actually has a voltmeter on it. So the battery with no load is sitting at 12.4 volts. It's 27 degrees inside and I have this set to one degree and I do have the low battery protection on here. Now first you're gonna see the fan kick on. So there goes the fan. Oh man, 10.5 volts and E1 error. So the compressor could not start because of the voltage drop. Now this is not an issue with the actual battery. This is not an issue with the fridge. This is an issue with the type of wiring that is in the vehicle. And so when you have too small of gauge wiring and you get a lot of voltage drop, uh, it's probably the most common problem you'll see is you won't be able to start up your 12 volt compressor fridge if you're not really close to the battery. So you wanna choose the closest 12 volt socket to the battery 
or you're gonna have to come up with your own solution. So let me go ahead and show you the power panel that I put in the Forerunner so this isn't a problem for me. Okay, so here's the power panel that I have set up. I have four Anderson power poles at the top. I have a voltmeter, USB ports, and a 12 volt socket. And this switch at the bottom basically just turns on the voltmeter and USB ports. Now I put this power panel here because we go camping a lot and we use these 12 volt compressor fridges, but also you can lay down the seats and sleep back here. And it's really nice to have the extra power whenever you're sleeping back here. So a couple different purposes for this. Let me go ahead and show you guys what it's like behind this panel and the wiring that I ran to the battery. Okay, so the power panel actually comes off and basically I just drilled holes in this and mounted these. And here is the back side. So basically you have just all your positives coming from one cable. This is a uh, eight gauge cable that runs from the battery. Now there's a fuse near the battery and it just runs all the way back here. And uh, basically I just have them all tied together. This is your voltmeter, USB ports, 12 volt socket, and the power switch. And then all the negatives are tied together. Now, the interesting thing is you can actually tie the negatives to anywhere that's metal on the ground on the vehicle. You can ground it out. So you only have to run one large cable from your battery and then ground out uh, the negative to the frame. And that works just fine. So uh, that is the power panel. Basically, everything just kind of tucks back in here. And uh, once I get that clicked in, let me go ahead and show you guys the voltage drop while using this cable versus the other side. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the 12 volt socket. You're gonna see, see the screen turn on here. Okay, we're sitting at 12.5 volts, 12.4. I'm gonna wait for the fan and compressor to kick on. Now watch the voltage here. Okay, look at that. Remember, we saw 10.5 volts, and now we're basically seeing around 11.7 to 11.9. So the compressor is running. That means the fridge is now cooling down and we did not get the E1 error. So now you guys know if you're having issues starting your fridge off your stock vehicle wiring, it's probably due to voltage drop. So the way around that is by running larger diameter wire or you can purchase a medium sized power station. I always recommend at least 500 watt hours or so you'd plug the power station into the vehicle to charge, and then you'd plug the fridge into the power station, and that would also be a workaround for this scenario. Now I've gone ahead and started up the engine, and you can see now the alternator is charging up the battery. We're sitting at 13.9 volts. So whenever the engine is running, we don't really have the issue of voltage drop, or at least the fridge can start because we're at a much higher voltage. So you only have to worry about the fridge not being able to start whenever the engine is not running. So I thought that'd be important to show you guys. Okay, so now that we're done with those experiments, what did you guys think? Some pretty interesting results, especially if you guys have a 12 volt compressor fridge that's having issues starting up, now you know it's probably due to voltage drop. So just to sum things up, if you wanna limit the voltage drop in your system, just remember to think about your wire diameter, make sure you choose the proper wire size, the wire length, you wanna make sure it's as short as possible. And if you are going with a long run of wires, Make sure that you use a larger diameter wire to limit the voltage drop and make sure you design your system properly for the amperage that will be moving through those wires. And if you do those three things, you should have pretty good results against voltage drop. Now, I'd love to get your guys' feedback. What did you guys think about this video? Is there anything that you guys are gonna change in your setup so you guys get less voltage drop? Throw a comment down below and let me know what you think. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you guys in the next one.